Welcome to the Academic Writing Amplified podcast. On this podcast, we believe that the culture of academia needs to change radically. Women and non-binary people are revolutionizing academia within institutions that were not built for us. If you're ready to reject the culture of overwork, kick guilt and overwhelm to the curb and amplify your voice to make a real impact on your field without breaking down or burning out, you're in the right place. With our team of experienced writing coaches as co-hosts, we'll share insights and talk to inspiring guests to bring you the practical strategies, systems, and mindset shifts you need to find time to write, publish work you love, and design your career on your terms. And it all starts with writing. Let's go. So today we are talking about how to unclog your publication pipeline. And this is a question we get a lot. It's something that worries people, right? Like, how do I get my publication pipeline to flow? So it's not just a theoretical collection of articles I might write, but instead it is a pipeline that projects flow through and they come out on the other end and get submitted. So this is part of our summer writing prep series. And In summer is often a time where we're thinking about getting more publications out. So as professors, this is not the same for everyone, but there's a general mood in the summer or the break that comes between, if you're on a semester system, the end of May, June, July, academic recess. There's kind of a general feeling of like, well, I'm going to use this to move advanced publications through my pipeline so that when I get to September and I'm teaching again or back in the thick of my university work, then I'm like a little bit ahead, right? Like academics are always worried about being ahead and behind. So today I wanted to talk about, you know, what do you actually do? What can you actually do to get that publication pipeline to flow? So you might have a lot of great productivity systems in place, and you can still have a publication pipeline that is clogged. So even if you have like a great calendar system, maybe like you've set up Trello or some other kind of project management system for yourself, and that's, you know, going really well, maybe you have like all the apps on your phone and you are like some people are really aware of how much time they spend on different things. So maybe you've tried a lot of productivity hacks or read a lot of productivity books and you've actually been able to adopt some of those things, right? And you have all of those things in place and yet still you don't have a flowing publication pipeline. That might just still be the area of your working life that you're like, geez, I just Still can't seem to get the publication pipeline to flow, even though I'm pretty good at calendarizing and scheduling and quote unquote productivity, right? Well, the thing is that being good at productivity, having productivity skills doesn't necessarily lead to the flowing publication pipeline. To unclog your publication pipeline, you'll need more than productivity systems. So you need more than a good calendar or a productivity app or something like that. You need some other core things. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So in our programs, we talk about kind of four levels of publication planning and mastery that you need to dominate and work on so that you can have a flowing publication pipeline. So the first level, the top level that's most important is the publication pipeline itself. And the way that we teach publication pipeline is that your pipeline is actually a multi-project plan. It's a high level multi-project plan for your writing and the writing projects that you're gonna do. So that's where you have multiple projects laid out. The second level is the project level, right? So that is breaking projects into tasks, knowing how long it takes you to complete tasks and being able to like project manage a writing project. That's the second level. And then the third level is your weekly planning. So your calendar, your calendar systems, your boundaries around your time and having scaled back and focused your work so that you have 
space in your calendar for writing, reading, thinking. And then the final bottom layer is the everyday writing session, right? Like how do you put pen to paper? How often do you do it? What kinds of writing tools do you use? What writing system do you have in place? Like the everyday, how do I make a writing session really great? And how do I make sure that I have one or two great writing sessions a week at least, and then I'm able to consistently do those writing sessions, even if sometimes we have to take a break because stuff gets in the way, we know how to get back. So those four levels are all important. And you'll notice that most productivity systems are only hitting that like weekly calendar level. So if you don't have the other things in place, then just have, I mean, ha- great. Listen, if you have your calendar set up and you have boundaries around the things that you need to do and you've like, maybe you've worked with time blocking methods so that you have certain time blocks for certain types of activities, fabulous, right? But you might notice that you did a lot of work there and you still don't have these other things in place, right? And that that, are, those are the things that you need to have in place in order to get your publication pipeline flowing. So it doesn't just take a great calendar app. It doesn't just take Calendly, which is a program that we recommend a lot that helps you do scheduling, right? So you don't have to do back and forth email. Maybe you've even read, maybe you really also, here's another thing that people do. You know that email is a big problem, And so you think, you have the thought, if I could just get my email under control, then the extra time I'm taking on email can be spent writing. So maybe you've read one of the many email books out there or started to use some kind of you know, a few apps inside of your email so that you can better kind of corral that email and make it work for you a little better and it doesn't suck up so much of your time. By the way, if you have done that, kudos to you because it's a big struggling point for a lot of people. But please also notice it's just still on that calendar level. You haven't resolved, you haven't figured out your publication pipeline design and how to make it flow. You haven't figured out your writing project management and you haven't figured out your writing system. So great, like you've saved time every week by corralling your email or using some kind of system in your email or changing your mindset around email, which is another thing that is really important. Fabulous. You still have other work to do. And that's why you're not seeing your publication pipeline flow. So good systems, good productivity systems can only go so far. You need like these publication systems, these areas of mastery around your publications and your writing that will create the flow in your publication pipeline that is going to help you get those publications submitted so that you can create the career that you want for yourself. So great, productivity is wonderful, But without the other pieces, it's not going to like completely solve your problem. So of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention (laughs) that these four things that I've been talking about, these four levels of publication planning, these four levels of mastery is exactly what we teach inside of our Navigate program. So the thing is that these four levels work together to unclog the pipeline. So I'll just go back and review them and just know that these are the four main areas that we work on. We work about three weeks on each area, but it's not exactly three weeks on each area in our 12-week Navigate program. And we teach you and coach you on implementing or mastering these four systems. The coaching part is really important because there's a lot of mindset work that goes into figuring this out and actually implementing it for yourself. So The top level, again, is the publication pipeline. So some things that are really important here. You have a publication pipeline that looks different from other people's, okay? So a publication pipeline has to show you, has to have on display for you all the stages of an academic article or whatever kind of thing that you write from idea to published out in the world, 
Okay. So at least you have to have the stages, idea, data collection and analysis, drafting, writing, submission, revising. It's out in the world. You know, like at least you have to have those stages. But what we help people teach and what we, we're very big advocates of is that you need to have stages in the pipeline that make sense for you. So in different fields, it's going to be different. And for different processes, it's going to be different. So you really, as the academic, as the scholarly writer, you need to figure out, again, we teach this, we guide you through this in the Navigate program, but you need to figure out, like, what are the stages of my pipeline? So for example, if I'm a historian, maybe I got to go to the archives. And if I'm a botanist, I got to grow some plants, you know, (laughs) right? Like, so there's like, it's going to be different for field, but it's also going to be different depending on your process. And I really don't like to prescribe a writing process. Like some people make an outline. Many science writers create figures first, right? And then figure out what figures they're going to show in the article, arrange them in the order, and then they write text around the figures. Many people just start writing. They start writing and they write and write and write and edit back. They write their way to the structure of the paper. So some people like to start with the structure and fill it in. Other people like to write their way to the structure. There is not one better way. There's only the best way for you. And so if you're in a program that teaches you, or maybe you've read a book or you've seen online that there is a best way, right? Like first, some kind, like how they teach you how to write in high school, right? First, you make an outline, then you do this, then you do that. They teach you that in high school because it's a general structure and it's helpful, but you don't have to stick with that. You can use what works for you. And you should. The only thing that's going to be sustainable for you is what works for you. So That's a little bit more about that unclogging that top level pipeline. You got to know what your own pipeline is, and then you need to map all of your projects onto it so you can see where things get clogged and then have the strategies to unclog those spots. That second level, right? The project management level, you need to have skills around managing a writing project, right? You need to know how to break a project into tasks. You need to know how long it's going to take you to complete those tasks. And those are things that you can only find out through self-reflection. Again, in Navigate, we walk you through that self-reflection process. We support you and coach you around it. But basically, once you master that, the project management of writing, you are going to be able to project management anything, project manage anything. Okay. So that's really important. Then the weekly getting space in your week, putting boundaries around your time, right? Honoring your writing time. All of those things are really important for that weekly planning. And then the writing session level planning and mastery. Like you need to be able to um, craft a writing practice that is sustainable, that creates a good relationship between you and your writing, and that is based in that relationship, that centers that relationship between you and your writing, and that you need to feel good about your writing. So this is all to say that how to unclog your publication pipeline. You might have lots of great productivity systems. You might be using apps. You might be using calendars. You might be doing lots of things. You got to-do lists. Maybe you got a bullet journal. That's fantastic. It is one part of the whole system that you really need to get your publication pipeline to flow. I hope that that was helpful and a little bit of, you know, just thought provoking, right? Like if you've been frustrated, like, oh, but I do all these things. Why am I still not getting publications out? There's more to it than that. And now that you know that you can start to pursue that and work on those different areas in your writing and publication as well. Applications are open for our summer session of our 12-week Navigate program, and we would love to have you join. So you can go ahead and find the link to apply in the description, or just go to scholarsvoice.org slash navigate, click the pink button to apply. We have a rigorous application process, and that's because we are curating an absolutely wonderful community of fellow scholars 
to go on this 12-week journey with you where you work on all four levels that we were just talking about. So if you want to get your publication pipeline to flow, unclog those things, the, that publication pipeline, get those publications out in the world, get your voice out in the world and influencing your field and create a sustainable writing practice, then apply for Navigate today. I hope to see you in our summer cohort. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time supporting yourself and your writing by listening to this episode. If you like what you heard today, the best way to say thank you is to hop on over to Apple iTunes and write an honest review. The more reviews, the more amazing academic women and non-binary people will find this podcast. So go write one now. 